Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am just sharing with you guys the mess of nails that I have going on here. <laughs> I broke two nails. This is the reason why I decided to cut down my nails. I talked about it in my last video where I did this set. I'll leave that linked if you guys are interested, but I mentioned that I was going to be doing these nails as my last long set of nails before the baby's arrival. I do not think that I'm not capable of handling my baby with long nails. However, I, for whatever reason, whenever I'm pregnant, I get very clumsy. <laughs> And y'all can ask my husband, he has seen me struggle and the proof here is my nails being broken. So I figured I would just go ahead and clip them off, shorten them a lot before the baby gets here and that way I can do things a lot easier. So I'm just taking my nail clippers and just gently clipping off the nail. Because these are on the thicker side, they are C-curved, I have to cut one side first and then the other side to fully cut it all the way off. But I'm basically going at the length that I want to do. And then we're gonna be doing that on the other hand as well. We are going to be prepping these nails. I'm taking my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file. I have her at about 9,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky as well. This one is medium grit in the color rose gold. And I'm just going to be gently filing off the top coat and the current design that I have. I only did it on one of my hands, so it's not gonna be a crazy process. So I am just basically going around the cuticle area very, very lightly and then across the entire nail. I'm trying to hold my finger very still. This is kind of a hard process, especially when you're doing it on yourself. You have way more control and a better grasp when doing it on a client. However, when you're doing it on yourself, I'm sure a lot of you nail techs can relate. It is a struggle. My hands will cramp up sometimes because I'm just putting so much tension into my one finger to kind of hold it still. <laughs> but we make made it through, it's fine. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and file off that top coat and the current design with very light pressure, very, very carefully. Once I have fully removed that top coat and the design, I am starting off by reshaping my nails. Of course, you guys saw that I trimmed them down quite a bit. So I am going to be focusing a good amount of time on refiling these nails. Whenever you do longer nails, you tend to do the nails thicker to compensate for the length. 
So I am making sure that everything is the perfect thickness to my liking. When I have shorter nails, I do tend to make them thinner. It makes them look a little bit more natural. And in my opinion, I just like thinner nails. They just look better. So I'm gonna be reshaping these, filing from side to side using my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. I'm kind of tapering them in just slightly. And then I am squaring off that tip as well as when you cut or trim them, that can get a little bit messed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process on the rest of my nails. And now moving on to my other hand, I am basically moving my right hand instead of the one that I'm holding the file with. This is going to help tremendously when you're working on your own nails with your non-dominant hand. You have better motion with your dominant hand. So I always suggest and recommend that you guys use that method versus trying to use your opposite hand to do the work. So I am going in and filing again the top coat off. For my right hand, I tend to use my hand file instead of my e-file. I have better grasp of that and better control of it. And instead of risking nicking my skin or cutting myself, I'd rather just go ahead and do it slightly longer process using my hand file. It does take a little bit longer, but I don't mind it. I'd rather save my skin, honestly speaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and file that off. Once you get the hang of it, it doesn't take as long as you would think because you're really focusing on moving your dominant hand very, very quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that off and then of course I'm gonna be filing them back into shape and then we're going to be adding tips to my middle finger and my index finger. I am going to be prepping my natural nail for the acrylic application. I am taking my Kiara Sky Rechargeable e-file. I have it down to a speed of 4,000 RPMs. That's my comfortable speed for any prep and I highly suggest you guys do the same. Anything higher can be a little bit dangerous and you can cause a little bit of damage on the natural nail and we do not want that. I am using my mandrel bit from Profiles Backstage along with their purple sanding bands. This one is in medium grit. They are super fine, so even the coarse grit ones work really well. Again, as long as you keep it at a low speed, you should be good to go. 
I'm just going very, very gently around that natural nail and gently pushing up my cuticle in one swoop. I know a lot of people have asked why I don't use a cuticle pusher. In my opinion, that's just an extra step when I can take care of all of that with my e-file. I'd rather just go ahead and do that in one motion. So again, gently pushing back that cuticle while buffing off the shine from the natural nail. If you have any lifting, go ahead and remove that at this point. I just have a little bit of overflow from the top coat, which I will easily be able to get rid of with this process. A quick little tip while using sanding bands. My favorite thing to do is turn it off, pop it off, and turn it around. This is going to give you more use from that same bit without wearing it down too much. If you are using a sanding band that is super worn out, it can easily cause friction on the nail, which causes a heat spike, which is pretty freaking painful. So what I like to do is just switch it around once I get to the other hand and then it's basically like you're using a new one without wasting another sanding band. So quick little tip for you guys. For my non-dominant hand, I am still using my e-file very, very carefully, still at 4,000 RPMs. I have now taken a little container that I actually keep my sanding bands in, and I use that to make my hand nice and steady for this process. You want to make sure you have a really good steady hand for this again we don't want to nick ourselves or cut ourselves so i'm just going gently around that cuticle in one motion what i like to do is go in one direction only i feel like this gives me better grasp of that e-file i still have it on the forward motion i did not switch my e-file to reverse for whatever reason i feel like this just works better for me i know for left-handed normally you do put it in reverse but I've always just kept it the same forward, so I don't know. I think it's because I'm moving it the opposite direction versus going back and forth. I'm sure I would struggle if I went back and forth, but it's working out so far. So I went ahead and prepped the middle finger and the index finger, and then I'm going around that cuticle area for my fill. I'm taking my needle bit. I have my e-file still at 4,000 RPMs and I'm just gently going around that cuticle area, picking up and removing any dead skin that I might have missed with my mandrel bit. Very, very gently, very carefully. I love these bits, highly recommend them if you want to perfect your prep. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other hand as well. I'm taking my cuticle ball bit and gently buffing off my dead cuticle. I freaking love this part as well. The prep, I feel like, is my favorite part of doing nails. And then, of course, the end result. But I feel like when you're prepping the nail, you just make the natural nail, the cuticle area, and everything just looks so much better than basically, you know, what the client comes in with. And it just looks so good in my opinion. So I'm just buffing off that very, very gently. I have now moved my e-file up to 5,000 RPMs. I have found that that is a little bit more effective than having it on a lower speed.
Now we are taking our Young Nails brush on glue, applying that on the back of our tip. I'm going to be applying that to my index finger. These are the Universal Not Polished tips. Full sculpted, pre-shaped in the stiletto shape. I am using these tips instead of the square ones that I used previously because I'm doing a more of a tapered square and you will achieve an easier tapered square with short nails using these tips. It eliminates the filing process that you have to do to square tips. So I'm just going ahead and using those and then lightly trimming off the excess. Again, just using my nail clippers. I have yet to purchase new tip cutters, so bear with me. <laughs> now I'm taking my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick File once again and just kind of shaping those up slightly, especially at the tip, because whenever you cut it, it will not be nice and straight. I'm very quickly grabbing my e-file. Once again, I'm going to be blending that tip together to my natural nail. It just helps with the application to make it a little bit smoother. Honestly speaking, I rarely do this, so it is not absolutely necessary. I am cleaning off my natural nail specifically along with my acrylic nail, dehydrating it all in one step using a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe. Now we are taking our primer. If you watched my video, my original video on this set, you will note that I use the Kiara Sky Acrylic Primer. When I tell you guys this thing still trips me out, it is not the normal consistency of a primer. Primers normally are just a liquid and it just flows into wherever you place it very nicely. This, however, has a consistency of kind of like a gel base, leaves it very, very tacky. So once it dries, it gets really, really tacky, which is supposed to help with the product adhesion. I will say from the last video, it worked really, really well. You guys will notice that my nails did not lift at all whatsoever. Normally, I get lifting on my non-dominant hand just because, you know, it's harder to apply that acrylic. But I did not have any lifting at all whatsoever on that hand. So... Definitely recommend it. It is a good primer. It is still a little bit trippy, not gonna lie. I don't know if I can get past the tacky layer, but if you are working on it with a client, I think it should be fine. I think just on myself, because I'm all over the place when I do my nails, I struggled a little bit with that stickiness. So now I'm going in with my acrylic fill. I am using Rose Water once again from Kiara Sky. This is from their cover collection, also mentioned in my last video using their brush as well super super pretty i showed that in that video as well so i'm going in and using a very very small bead of acrylic and just placing that in the fill area gently blending it out and adding any acrylic that i feel is necessary small bead of acrylic placing it basically where the growth is at holding my finger in a downward position i'm gonna let the product flow naturally downwards and then I'm just gonna gently blend that together. Now, I don't know if it is the product itself or the temperature that my room was at, well, my salon was at, but I did notice while doing my acrylic fill that the acrylic was drying very quickly. So again, I'm not sure if it is the actual product or the fact that it may have been hot inside the salon. So I will be giving this a go one more time and kind of give you guys an update on that. I can't remember if it was the same with the original video when I used the products, but from this, you can kind of see it dry very, very quickly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails, do my other hand as well, and kind of let you guys watch that process. Now I'm going to be adding some of that really bright orangey pink color that I originally used on my nails. The reason why I'm doing this is because typically when you are doing a set kind of like what I'm doing in today's video, 
you want to make sure that everything is super cohesive so I, if i go in and just do the pink on the index finger and the middle finger it's going to look off so my thought process on this is to make it look exactly like my other hand and i am going to be doing that just by adding the smallest amount of that neon color and then basically putting the nude over top so it's going to mimic basically what my other hand looks like just a little pop of that orange color coming through. It's not necessary, however, I like things to look exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be finishing off these nails and prep for our nail art. Once everything is nice and dry, I am taking my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file once again at 8 to 9,000 RPMs. I'm using their 5-in-1 bit as well. And I'm just going to be starting off my e-filing process around the cuticle area and then going down the surface of the nail. Very light pressure. I'm trying to perfect the smoothness while not removing bulk product. It is important that you use very light pressure, especially when you perfect your acrylic application. You do not want to overfile that nail. Again, around that cuticle area and then down the entire nail. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. Once I'm content with that, I'm taking my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file once again, filing those nails into perfection, at least trying to. I am just going in on the sides, reshaping those nails slightly and scoring that tip off as well. Thank you. 
Now when it comes to my right hand, again, I like to use my hand file for this step. I am going in on that surface of the nail using my right hand, moving it very, very quickly as you guys can see. This helps speed up the process and then I am placing my hand back onto my little container to steady my hand and go very, very carefully around that cuticle area and try to make it as flush as possible. I do one harsh motion. As you can see, that kind of uh, is my way of filing the cuticle area and then I go in on the surface of the nail. Destiny has my name, no, it's coming, it'll never go. I know that we all gonna be all right. We gonna make it through if it takes us all night. No matter what the odds may bring our way. I can see the blessings coming our way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings on blessings, yeah. I can see the blessings coming our way, our way. I can't say the life's been perfect or complain cause life's been worth it And all because of who he is is working I'll be working out for my God And no more living in that fear No more tears and all no Oh, he's working me and molding me I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some young nail swipe once again cleaning the surface of the nail I did actually wash my hands prior to this But I'm still doing this step just in case any of the soap oils will affect that nail art It is important that when you have your clients wash their hands. It's only rinsing them with water I'm going in and using the profiles backstage Gel paint these are from their neon collection, which I am absolutely obsessed with I have now started using the Not Polish nail art brush, and I'm not gonna lie, I really, really like it. <laughs> I'm using the longer length this time, and I'm just adding a hint of orange on the tips of my nails. Again, this is the Neon Orange from Profiles Backstage. Their gel paints are my freaking favorite. They honestly have a really good consistency. The pigments are super opaque, which is exactly what you want. The color variety is amazing as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my orange little accent. And then we're gonna be popping that into the UV LED light from Kiara Sky, only for about 30 seconds, just wanting to freeze that into place so I don't ruin it while I do my other nail art. It's too late now to turn around and back again. Now for our nail art, because these are short nails, I am not used to short nails. I honestly just kind of thought of whatever nail art and smiley faces popped into my head. So we're doing smiley faces. My husband was like, what are you doing? I was like, smiley faces. And he kind of looked at me strange and I was like, just go with it, it's fine. So here we are doing some yellow. This is the neon yellow from Profiles Backstage. Again, just using my nail art brush from Not Polish. And I am doing kind of a half circle on one end and then a full one right next to it. And then I'm gonna be doing some smiley faces on the ring finger as well. Very carefully just doing a circle. That's gonna be our base. And then we're gonna be doing the details in black. I'm 
Broken plans, so we can start again. Wanting down a second chance. I'm too selfish for that. I let you fall again. I let you know that. Make sure you are curing that yellow and the light before you go in with your black or any other colors that you decide to use. Now I am taking the smaller nail art brush from Not Polish. This one is just shorter in length and I feel like that kind of helps me a little bit better when it comes to smaller details like that. I am now using the black gel paint from Profiles Backstage and very, very carefully outlining that circle and then we're going to be doing the eyes and the smiley face with the same black gel paint. Now make sure you cure that fully in the light before you go in with your top coat. But for today's video, I asked my husband and my son, what should I do? Matte or shiny? My husband always agrees with me that matte just makes nail art pop. So of course he chose matte. My son decided to choose shiny. So we are doing matte it from Not Polish on my left hand. And I'm just adding thin layers of that over top of our nail art while really pressing it into the nail art, making sure that it's getting into any creases and divots that you might have created with the gel paint. 
and then we're gonna be curing that in the light for a full minute i like to do two minutes just to be safe and i've been dying to try this top coat that is from kiara sky because my son decided to choose shiny what i will say is the bristles on the brush threw me off so much i'm so used to like a kind of a stiffer brush when it comes to top coats this one just spread out smoothly and coated the entire nail i don't know it threw me off definitely like it um it is no wipe which i feel like is a must when it comes to nails i prefer that so much over a tacky layer same process very thin coats i'm applying that on top of the surface of the nail pressing it into the nail art and we're going to be curing that same amount of time, a minute. I like to do two minutes just to be safe. And I'll let you guys know how this top coat holds up. So far, so good. Y'all already know, applying a generous amount of my favorite cuticle oil. This is from Profiles Backstage. Love it, love it, love it. it. Smells so good. It melts right into your skin without leaving an oily cast, which I feel is crucial for a really good picture and video when it comes to the finished results. So I'm just gently going around that cuticle area and really kind of massaging that into the cuticle and blending it outwards to the rest of my finger. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. Matte or shiny, which one is the winner? Let me know down below in the comment section. But I'll see you guys later. Bye.